We're still playing the stupid defund the police game. Well, the entire police force in a town in South Carolina is not playing this game anymore. They just quit, claiming mistreatment, a hostile work environment, and the lack of funds all after the cuts were made by the town's council, which is everything the defund the police crowd wanted. And, and would you look at that? And now the town is left without any protection whatsoever. It gets worse, though, folks. The mayor. Oh, this is a perfect world. The mayor told the residents to behave themselves and show the county that they can handle themselves without police over the holidays. We'll see how that goes. Brianna Lyman, elections correspondent, the Federalist, Terry Schilling, pre uh, president of the American Principles Project. Brianna, like, would you feel super safe getting money out of the ATM at midnight in that town? I wouldn't even feel safe going to my mailbox. And the funny thing is, like you said, the mayor's telling the residents to be safe. Most of the time, the residents are safe. The criminals are the ones you have to worry about, and they're not going to heed your warning. And you're right, this all stems back to 2020. There has been a movement in which America was, was founded on the principle of innocent until proven guilty. If you're wearing a blue badge, you are guilty of whatever the left, you know, prescribes onto you until you're proven innocent otherwise. And that definitely contributes to people feeling that they're not empowered to do their job. Communities not welcoming them. And I will say, from the reports I read, these community members do value their police. There's something going on with the government. Yeah, well, that's what elections are for. All right, Terry, another reason. Okay, so like everybody here knows it's not Canada that I hate, it's just Trudeau. I really just hate that guy. <laughs> but this is a reason, another reason you won't find me in Canada because there's actually a lot of Canadians that watch this show that are really like super conservative people that I really like. Okay, so the, the streets were littered with rioters. They were shouting death to America, Israel, and Canada. This is all during the NATO assembly on Friday. And look, Justin Trudeau, he's up partying at a Taylor Swift concert doing his stupid dance. Wait, like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> no, no, uh, Carl, that's exactly right. And, and this is what happens when tolerance goes too far. I think that there's a compromise here to be made. And, and hear me out, Carl. What if we just tolerated these people and left them in their own countries? What if we didn't have to virtue signal by bringing in people that want to chop our heads off and kill us and destroy our nations into our own countries? I, I think it's a nice compromise. We just tolerate them in their own countries, uh, but we stop bringing them here to America mm -hmm. and Canada. We could also annex Canada to Yemen. <laughs> All right, so according to another report, Brianna, employees at GEICO are mandated to take these stupid courses instructing them how to discuss their pronouns with customers. How about you sell cars? Yeah, go Or car insurance, I should say. Taking... Well, I mean, you should tell that to Jaguar, who's selling trannies instead of cars. But uh, going along with this type of pro pro uh, pronoun nonsense is like a uh, cult initiation on the left. And I feel like Bud Light, Target, Jaguar, and now Geico are all trying to outdo themselves. But Americans have resoundingly rejected this idea that we should affirm the delusions of the far left. And I think that mm -mm. we are going to see pushback, rightfully so but not soon enough because companies still haven't learned the lessons that Bud Light did months ago. Yeah, but Terry, in the same light of this, we have we, we have come to a place now where there's like, you know, five people that I've ever met in my life that actually mean anything about these, um, you know, these pronoun things. And I'm supposed to like change the whole way I do things. It's like, you're a dude or you're not. Like, you're a girl or a guy. Like, what, why do I need to they, them people? Well, the craziest thing about the pronoun debate is that it's all about controlling how you speak when the other person isn't even around, right? When I'm talking to a transgender person in real life, right, if I ever have to do that, I'm going to use you, your pronouns. I'm not going to use these weird pronouns that are third person Jeez, pronouns <laughs> because you're right here. They want to control you and how you speak even when they're not around. It's totally bad bonkers. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for letting me stay on air for another day after that. Uh, so, but Brianna, here's another one. Okay, so according to this widely cited blog, it's called Empirical, Empirical SCOTUS that tracks a lot of Supreme Court activity. As of November 15th, they kept track of how many words the justices use, and Katanji Brown Jackson has spoken the most words in oral arguments when compared to any other justice. And I'm like, look, she didn't have any words to say when they asked her what a woman was. Well, I think what we've now learned is that speaking really doesn't have any correlation to how high your intelligence is. And with Clarence Thomas in particular, he once went 10 years without asking a single 
questioned during oral arguments. And what he's always said is, let the advocates who are the lawyers advocate. Usually his questions were answered or another justice asked those questions, but he felt that he was best positioned to listen to the arguments rather than interject himself. And that clearly highlights the fact that, you know, he's written some amazing opinions. He's always very knowledgeable and he always knows the facts of the case. So speaking all the time doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you know the case better, or you're the better justice. Hey, well, Terry, the, the, you know, there's a saying that said God gave us two ears and one mouth because we're supposed to listen twice <laughs> as much as we talk. Katanji Brown Jackson didn't get the memo. No, listen, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson could be one of those kids in those Charlie Kirk videos that stand up as events and just <laughs> ramble on and on and on and never actually get to the question. It's it's wonderful to see. <laughs> yeah, no, if you've never listened to the Supreme Court, like listen to those oral arguments, it is actually shocking for her to try to ask a simple question, like a yes or no question. She just went on and on. It's almost like maybe she didn't know what she was doing, dare I say. Brianna Lyman, Terry Schilling, have a great Thanksgiving. All right.